Diary of a Wimpy Kid, a novel and cartoons, the first New York Times bestseller. Jeff Kenney. To Mom, Dad, Reed, Scott, and Patrick. September Tuesday. First of all, let me get something strange. This is a journal, not a diary. I know what it says on the cover, but when Mom went out to buy this thing, I specifically told her to get one that didn't say diary on it. Great. All I need is for some jerk to catch me carrying this book around and get the wrong idea. The other thing I want to clear up right away is that this was Mom's idea, not mine. But if she thinks I'm going to write down my feelings in here or whatever, she's crazy. So just don't expect me to be all dear diary this and dear diary that. The only reason I agreed to do this at all is because I figure later on when I'm rich and famous, I'll have better things to do than answer people's stupid questions all day long. Here's my journal. Now, shoo shoo. Like I said, I'll be famous one day, but for now, I'm stuck in middle school with a bunch of morons. Let me just say for the record that I think middle school is the dumbest idea ever invented. You got kids like me who haven't hit their growth spurt yet, mixed with these gorillas who need to shave twice a day. And then they wonder why bullying is such a big problem in middle school. If it was up to me, grade levels would be based on hate, not age. But then again, I guess that would mean kids like Jira Gupta would still be in the first grade. Today is the first day of school, and right now we're just waiting around for the teacher to hurry up and finish the seating chart. So I figured I might as well write in this book to pass the time. By the way, let me give you some good advice. On the first day of school, you got to be real careful where you sit. You walk into the classroom and just plunk your stuff down on any old desk, and the next thing you know, the teacher is saying, "I hope you all like where you're sitting because these are your permanent seats." So in this class, I got stuck with Chris Hosey in front of me and Lionel James in back of me. Jason Bro came in late and almost sat to my right, but luckily I stopped that from happening at the last second. Next period, I should just sit in the middle of a bunch of hot girls as soon as I step in the room. But I guess if I do that, it just proves I didn't learn anything from last year. Man, I don't know what is up with girls these days. It used to be a whole lot simpler back in elementary school. The deal was, if you were the fastest runner in your class, you got all the girls. And in the fifth grade, the fastest runner was Ronnie Emsikoy. Nowadays, it's a whole lot more complicated. Now it's about the kind of clothes you wear, or how rich you are, or if you have a cute butt, or whatever. And kids like Ronnie and Sikoy are scratching their heads, wondering what the heck happened. The most popular boy in my grade is Bryce Anderson. The thing that really stings is that I have always been into girls, but kids like Bryce have only come around. In the last couple of years, I remember how Bryce used to act back in elementary school. But of course, now I don't get any credit for sticking with the girls all this time. Like I said, Bryce is the most popular kid in our grade, so that leaves all the rest of us guys scrambling for the other spots. The best I can figure is that I'm somewhere around. 52nd or 53rd most popular this year, but the good news is that I'm about to move up one spot because Charlie Davis is above me and he's getting his braces next week. 
I try to explain all this popularity stuff to my friend Rolly, who is probably hovering right around the 150 mark, by the way. But I think it just goes in one ear and out the other with him. Wednesday. Today we have peace at. So the first thing I did when I got outside was sneak off to the basketball court to see if the cheese was still there. And true enough, it was. The piece of cheese has been sitting on the blacktop since last spring. I guess it must have dropped out of someone's sandwich or something. After a couple of days, the cheese started getting all moldy and nasty. Nobody would play basketball on the court where the cheese was, even thought that was the only court that had a hoop with a net. Then one day, this kid named Darren Walsh touched the cheese with his finger, and that's what started this thing called the cheese touch. It's basically like the cuties. If you get the cheese touch, you're stuck with it until you pass it on to someone else. The only way to protect yourself from the cheese touch is to cross your fingers. But it's not that easy remembering to keep your fingers crossed every moment of the day. I ended up tapping mine together so they'd stay crossed all the time. I got a D in handwriting, but it was totally worth it. This one kid named Abe Hall got the cheese touch in April and nobody would even come near him for the rest of the year. This summer, Abe moved away to California and took the cheese touch with him. I just hope someone doesn't start the cheese touch up again because I don't need that kind of stress in my life anymore. First day I'm having a seriously hard time getting used to the fact that summer is over and I have to get out of bed every morning to go to school. My summer did not exactly get off to a great start, thanks to my older brother, Roderick. A couple of days into summer vacation, Roderick woke me up in the middle of the night. He told me I slept through the whole summer, but that luckily I woke up just in time for the first day of school. You might think I was pretty dumb for falling for that one. But Roderick was dressed up in his school clothes and he set my alarm clock ahead to make it look like it was the morning. Plus, he closed my certain so I couldn't see that it was still dark out. After Roderick woke me up, I just got dressed and went downstairs to make myself some breakfast like I do every morning on a school day. But I guess I must have made a pretty big racket because the next thing I knew, that was downstairs, yelling at me for eating Cheerios at 3 o'clock in the morning. It took me a minute to figure out what the heck was going on. After I did, I told Dad that Roderick had played a trick on me and he was the one that should be getting yelled at. Dad walked down to the basement to chill Roderick out and attacked along. I couldn't wait to see Roderick get what was coming to him. But Roderick covered up his tracks pretty good. And to this day, I'm sure that things I've got a screw loose or something.